I need to tell my story. Tell your story. Before we talk about Sweet Baby Inc., give you a little history of censorship in gaming. I'll start with my personal background. I have always been a gamer. Uh, first game I ever played was my father took me to work and I played a text-based Star Trek game. And all I remember was feeling elated when the text came up, you have left dry dock on the Starship Enterprise. That led to buying an old game system at a yard sale where you had to tape clear, transparent color onto a black and white TV so you could play tennis, which was basically Pong. Since then, I played the Odyssey 2, which was a game that had a Star Wars game. I think it was called Space War that had ships shaped like TIE fighters. And it had a keyboard. It was the only game system that came with a keyboard. Look up the Odyssey 2. Since then, I've had every major game system. Sega Genesis, Super NES, where I played games like Earthbound. Where I played games like uh, Batman. Uh, where I played a lot of different games going through every... I had a 3DO. I had a Philips CDI. I had the Sega Saturn. I had the Dreamcast, name the game system I had. I waited in line 18 hours to get a an Xbox 360 in 2005. That's when HDTVs first came out. But what a lot of people don't know about me is that I was the editor of a video game magazine in the 1990s called Video Games Magazine. I was at that magazine for uh, years. And in addition to doing film threat was like my side job. And I actually made a living working in video game magazines, video game. This is uh, one of the issues, the earlier issues of video game magazine from the nineties. Here, here you go. Uh, that's me. Uh, I, we would write editorials every issue and video games. We covered everything, all sorts of types of gaming. That even branched off into different types of magazines, including Computer Player. Some people might remember that. Computer Player covered, you know, uh, computer games and CD-ROM games, which were new at the time. There was even a magazine called Tips and Tricks that spun off from all of that. Tips and Tricks, Ultimate Gamer, among others. Now, the big ones in the field that always kicked our butt was EGM. I loved EGM. EGM was great. It had attitude. These magazines didn't have quite as much attitude, but we had a lot of fun doing them. But at the time, which a lot of people don't remember, there was a lot of battles about violence in video games. Let me get right to it. I'm going to be presenting some screens here. And I'm just going to start to show you some of this stuff. Because you think that Sweet Baby Inc. is the company that's this new thing and, and, and they're, they're changing parts of games to the point where gamers don't like them. Back in the 90s, the U.S. government held, they had committees and there were, there were people in our government actively trying to stop video games from happening. Uh, quickly, just going to run you through and just sort of look at some of the covers of Video Games Magazine there uh just to give you a look at it so there were just going to show you like some of the editorials and one in particular got me in trouble and that's what i want to talk about and what was weird was i was always getting in trouble when it came to film threat and here i am doing effectively a video game magazine that's for children and still getting in trouble a lot of trouble uh we had a um we had an editorial where, where I would write a little editorials, video games versus real life. That was one topic. Another topic, this is Winter CES 94. That's how long ago this was. So that's 30 years ago, cutting through the hype. We had our little screen with the editors where we we're all kind of characters. And I wasn't the only one that wrote editorials for the magazine, which was a lot of fun. But I got myself in trouble when I wrote about fighting video games. And here's what happened. A guy named Daniel Lundgren, who was the attorney general of the state of California, sent a warning 
to the video game industry. He sent a letter. I'm going to read parts of it. He sent a letter to the video game industry and effectively said, if you do not, um, I'll read the quote, either remove the needless violence from the games or remove the games from the market. He was threatening this attorney general of the state of California who had ambitions to actually be the governor of the state of California, a Democrat, I might add, was looking to remove games from the market. And he sent out this letter. Uh, I'm going to read it to you. All of this is going to make sense uh, in a second, but I need to read this to you. I am writing you today to ask you to stop the manufacturing, licensing, distribution, or sale of any video game that portrays graphic and gratuitous violence, including but not limited to the games Mortal Kombat and Night Trap. Night Trap, created by a company called Digital Pictures. I'll get to that. Put a pin in it. Uh, let me be clear. I am not proposing legislation, government regulation, or litigations to curtail the availability of these video games. Instead, I am appealing to your sense of corporate and personal responsibility. Oh, what does that sound like to you? Sounds a little sweet baby to me. Either remove the needless violence from the games or remove the games from the market. Never before has our society seen such gruesome acts of violence committed by youths at younger and younger ages, the number of juveniles arrested for murder in the United States increased 119% between 1986 and 1991. Here in California, the number of juvenile arrests for murder increased over 136% during the same period. Continual exposure to violent images and themes in various entertainment may not be the direct result to direct cause of these atrocious acts, but interactive video games, which promote violence, uh, do have deadening desensitizing impact on young impressionable youth. Studies of both television and video game exposure have found that violent video games encourage aggressive activity and antisocial behavior. For example, a 1987 national coalition on television violence study found that violent video games lead to more aggressive behavior by children. The message conveyed to our children by these violent video games is that the only way to win or be successful and obtain power is to demean and destroy opponents while stripping away their humanity. I am particularly disturbed by the fact that many new video games are more realistic in their portrayal of graphic violence and other adult oriented themes. This trend ignores the industry's own statistic that approximately 70% 70 of all video games are owned by children. Leadership comes from the top. And that is why I am calling upon you and other industry leaders to remove the needless violence in your company's video games or withdraw them from the market. Basically saying, take your games off the shelf. Let's all explore new ways to challenge, educate, and entertain our youth rather than going for the cheap, mindless, misleading, and dangerous thrill of video game violence. I look forward to your reply and consideration of this matter. Sincerely, Daniel E. Lundgren, Attorney General, State of California. I responded to his, uh, this was a letter that was sent to everyone, myself included. Okay, so I received a copy of this letter. It was sent out to the media and it was sent to every other video game publication at the time in the 90s. I responded, I don't know if you can see this, I responded by running a graphic of Daniel Lundgren's head on a finishing move from Mortal Kombat. Can you see that, Alan? Yes, thank you. And in it, I respond, Dear Mr. Lundgren, a lot of politicians tend to jump on the bandwagon with these causes for their own political gain. And I notice an election is just around the corner. However, I appreciate your concerns regarding kids and violent video games. I happen to be a father myself, but I'd rather have my child acting out fantasies with a controller than with a fist or a real gun. It could be argued this kind of release is actually a healthy thing for all young people. And I'll bet I could quote some prestigious study that backs up this claim. While our government continues to blame popular entertainment for the world's problems, we are never offered any positive solutions by our government leaders other than to censor or ban the product. That's just too simple. I personally believe the decline of 
our youth has more to do with a poor educational system and deterioration of the family than video games. The state of the American school system is at an embarrassing all-time low, and your efforts to attack the video game industry divert attention from your institution's own shortcomings. Why not rally our industry around a positive cause? A computer on every child's desktop by the year 2000? That's something I'm sure the video game industry could get behind. Efforts to censor popular forms of media have come and gone. Here's a short list. Comic books, Seduction of the Innocent, a book published in the 1950s, argued that Mad Magazine and horror comics were the downfall of our youth. This upset politicians so much that it led to Senate hearings on the issue. Surprisingly, this generation survived. Rock and roll has received a constant harassment by elected officials since its birth. It's funny to note that President Bill Clinton likes it. Rap ditto. Movies. Sylvester Stallone's Rambo films upset parents' groups everywhere. However, the early 80s generation that grew up on these flicks seems okay. So far, television. For television, Married with Children continues to ruin the lives of millions of children at 9 p.m. every Sunday night, despite efforts by Michigander Terry Ricolta to have it taken off the air. A lot of people don't remember that Terry Ricolta. Entertainers. Elvis's gyrating crotch region almost kept him off television, and even religious leaders were against him. Elvis later went on to record many inspirational gospel songs, and now he's on a U.S. postage stamp. Taking Mortal Kombat off, off the shelf is not going to suddenly stop violent acts by young people. But it's a foregone conclusion that in 30 or 40 years, there will be someone in the White House who has played video games. Going to be maybe even longer now. Uh, hopefully he or she have honed his or her problem-solving techniques from these challenging games. Perhaps this next generation will avoid blame and denial and take responsibility by looking for realistic solutions to our more serious problems. I signed it, your pal, Chris Gore, editor-in-chief of Video Games Magazine. Now, so after this, I, I responded, and apparently Dan Lundgren's nephew is a subscriber to Video Games Magazine and saw this. So funny thing happened. He actually sent me a letter personally that funny enough, he actually sent to the media before he sent it to me. Of course, of course. I then was in, I was in the Wall Street Journal. I was in the New York Times. I was in all, because I was getting calls. I walk into work on a Friday afternoon and they're like, hey, the New York Times called. I'm like, wait, what? Uh, the LA Times called, Wall Street Journal, this. I'm like, what are you talking about? They said, they're, they want you to respond to the letter that Daniel Lundgren sent you. Suddenly, I'm in all these national papers. This is in 1995. It's around 95. Um, and I basically responded that button mashing doesn't win a fighting game in Mortal Kombat. When it comes to Mortal Kombat, the thing that wins the game is being very strategic. It's like a form of high-speed chess. So... What, what what I found disgusting was that this politician was using this issue as a way to uh, get attention so he could make a run for governor of the state of California. We fought all of this in the press, and this is something that people don't know because this was never in the press. I asked his press department, I said, look, could we just educate you about games? And to his credit, Daniel Lundgren actually came to the offices of Video Games Magazine. Uh, by the way, the day before, an advanced team came. Guys, I'm talking about like they look like they're, uh, they're from, um, you know, the men in black. The men in black, like these scary guys with, you know, sung. I mean, they're like scoping out the location because the attorney general was coming to our offices. And we had a very pleasant, not public conversation about video games he mentioned that his nephew saw the image in the magazine um i never apologized for what i did but i stand by the fact that what games and video games are about which is why they're so addicting and which why people love video games is because it's about problem solving 
because that's what it, it, innately as humans, we love to problem solve. That's why different methods of education work better with kids than other types of, of education. One that asks questions rather than just memorize this and, and tell me that you memorized it. That doesn't work on kids. But if you present a problem to kids, they're innately interested in trying to figure it out. That's that's And all types, all video games are the same thing. It's solving a problem, whether it's a puzzle video game, whether it's a violent game, whether it's a hoppy jumpy side scroller, you have to solve a problem and the and and, and get past that it's, it's also could be a metaphor for life. So I've always been a gamer. It's not my first love. My first love is movies. I'd say literature and comic books and video games, but um, this experience taught me something. They're always going to vilify something. Mm -hmm. How does this tie into sweet baby? According to Paul Chato, government is still involved in helping support companies like Sweet Baby. And what I saw as that played out, I was blissfully unaware of Gamergate 1. It's it's and, and when I see the types of people that complain about stuff that they don't like, I just wait for them to go away. You saw in my editorial, I mentioned Terry Ricolta. I didn't even remember who that person was until I reread my editorial. Terry Ricolta was someone who actually tried to get the television show Married with Children off the air. This is something that the problem has evolved. It's evolved into now companies doing this as a consulting. And it's very disconcerting. Yeah. I mean, I barely remember this happening a while, a long time ago, but it's, it's gone back to kind of what I've always said. The, the, the tactics of the conservatives back in the eighties and nineties, they, they, they seem to have trans uh, shifted over to the left and the woke movement. And uh, and somehow is much more effective today than it was back then. But you're right in the sense of, uh, you know, government seems to have this reason to want to uh, stifle anything that's fun. Uh, you mentioned, I think Tipper Gore was part of the uh, censoring, yes. you know, music, uh, video games here. And, um, you know, it, it, it's just weird how things have just kind of come full circle and from the from the party that we never expected this to come from. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's just this fight for people who have, you know, government sets itself up as to be our, our saviors, uh, our morality saviors. Uh, it happened then, it's happening now. And that's, that's exactly what's happening with Sweet Baby Inc. Who's that?